Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello. Hello. It is the end of January. It went by so fast. And yet, at the same time, kind of slow. Kind of at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, when I look back at the books that I have read in January, I kind of looked at the ones I read at the beginning of the month and went, hmm, it was a long time ago. Yeah, that's exactly how I was feeling. I looked at a couple of these, I'm like, when did I read that? I did read that this month. What what happened to this month? So today we are talking, obviously, about our January wrap-up for books. This is everything that we have read in the month of January. We were planning on doing an every two week update, but honestly, we just had other stuff this week. So yeah. It just didn't work out that way. So we're just going to give you everything for the month of January. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Also, I do want to put out there that if you are following me on Instagram, you will see exactly what I'm reading at least a week after I read it. But the reviews do go out, so if you are looking for a mini review, go pop over there and see what we got. And if you are looking at my Instagram, you'll find out that I am terrible at Instagram. He kind of is. And if you're looking at the Elated Geek Instagram, you will see that we are struggling to actually post things on there, because I always forget. Sorry about that. So before we start, what are you drinking? Well... Today, we decided to get ourselves some breakfast and coffee from the Panera. I, I've got their iced coffee with a little bit of bittersweet chocolate syrup. Oh, how is that? It's a little bit more bitter than sweet. <laughs> well, you're also drinking bitter coffee, so mm. that kind of makes that, sense. That does do that, yes. yes. I am also drinking Panera coffee, iced coffee, with just half and half, and two stevia. Mm -hmm. Cause that's how I roll. That's my that's my favorite way to do their coffee, for sure. Just very plain. Have you ever noticed just how much joy we get out of things that are rooted in darkness and bitterness? Quite a lot. Yeah. Definitely a lot. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so we'll start with the stats. Where are you at? Well, for the month of January, I read 13 books. I'm only at six. It is okay. You uh -huh. had kind of a... Kind of a crazy month at work. It, it was a not so month, uh, I'll admit. But also, I just haven't quite gotten into the routine of reading an actual book book before I go to bed. I've had way too much ease with falling asleep to watching somebody speedrun Metroids. Yes. Yeah. Although I think that that would maybe make me want to stay up longer just watching them do it. But maybe the repetitiveness would make me fall asleep. I don't know. I could go either way there. Uh, the guy has gone from going in an hour and 20 minutes down to an hour and 17 minutes over the course <laughs> of six different videos. Wow. I typically fall asleep by level three. Wow. So how many total pages did you get? I got 2,417. I got 4,672, which makes me a level 12, according mm -hmm. to our gamer system. What about you? What, what, uh, mine what is you? level 10. There you go. So let's really quickly explain what we're talking about with our level system here. Last year, when we were starting to kind of challenge ourselves with books, we treated the page count that we had read as if it was experience points in a video game for leveling up. And for my rubric, I am currently using the way that Vincent levels up in Final Fantasy VII. Vincent is a totally metal character, and I'm pretty certain he's also somebody who would sit around and read, if given the chance. So if you manage to track down which XP he uses to level up, we're using that same set of levels. And I have oh, gotcha. everything from level 1 to level 50. Level 50 requires 307,210 experience points wow so yeah <laughs> i don't know if we're gonna get there but you know we can try that's right maybe lifetime <laughs> all right so as far as stars go i have one five star book eight four star books and four three star books 
I've got two five star, two four star, and two three star. Wow, just really equal there for you. Well, I also have one DNF. Oh, I forgot to even like count that. Just a sec. Um, and then I DNF six books. Okay. This month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Formats. I listened to four audiobooks this month, which for me is pretty good. So it'll take me about a week to really get through an audiobook in its entirety because I'm listening to it during work and a lot of times it's just hard to listen to it straight through Mm -hmm. or I will just not feel like listening to it. So I I would say one a week is is a pretty good measure. I read seven ebooks and two physical books. All of mine was done by audiobooks, primarily because it's really easy for me to listen to it while I'm walking to work, and also while we're closing up shop at work, and while I'm doing my daily stuff on Animal Crossing, because I don't necessarily need audio except for one particular bug that I don't know if I'll ever find. Which is which one? It's buried, and it makes a chirping noise when you get close to it. Since I never have the sound turned on on my Switch, I don't think I'll ever find it. But that doesn't mean that I don't use my eyes at any point. Uh, Right now, I have gotten started on A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Ooh, yes, you said it. (sighs) This series, like I was saying earlier, it's a title so long and convoluted. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But... uh, It makes sense once you read the book. Oh, yeah, it totally does. But, you know, it's hard to remember. So, yeah, I'm I'm currently reading that in ebook format. And I'm going to be reading the entire series in ebook format. Mm -hmm. So this month, as far as like, you know, genre types, I kind of surprised myself. So usually I read a lot of thriller and a little bit of contemporary. That's that my, technically my mm-hmm. go-to. But this month I only read three mystery thrillers, four contemporary romances, and six fantasy, which for me is really unheard of because fantasy is hit or miss. But I think the reason why I read so many fantasy was because I actually read two duology books Mm -hmm. series, and that kind of contributed to that, and we'll talk more about it when we talk about exactly what we read in January. I read one sci-fi, one fantasy, one thriller, one horror, and then one other. What is the other? The other one was Paperbacks from Hell by Grady Hendrix. So it's not a horror? It's, this is not actually a horror book. It is a book that is the history of horror books from the 70s and 80s. So it kind of gives you the rise and fall of these really bad paperback novels and the cultural influences that made them. So it's nonfiction. It is a nonfiction book. And definitely other. (laughs) It is definitely an other book. Right. But it was just one of those books that was so bizarre when I was listening to it. Mm -hmm. It was a train wreck, which is kind of what these horror novels were. Right. Okay. Well, that makes more sense. And then I I track this. I don't know if Marshall does. Age ranges of books. I read six adult, six young adult, and one new adult, which I actually had to look up new adult because I couldn't remember what it classified as but yeah one is new adult do you know what new adult is no i think i kind of get what you're going for but we're coming up with so many different age ranges of books that we need to stop using the word adult in them (laughs) i mean probably yes this is this is kind of what i found after researching the difference between new adult and young adult the protagonists of New Adult are generally a little older than Young Adult. Typically, they fall between the age range of 18 and 25. Themes can cross over between New Adult and Young Adult, but New Adult often takes it a step further and really shows a character's struggle, often not very pretty or perfect, as they discover where they fit in into the world. And that is from an article, she knows.com. She oh. does know. But that makes more sense. I think it can overlap. Uh, I guess, I think what what the real difference is with a young adult is that it's it's trying to connect with somebody who doesn't know who they were and they don't really have to worry about it yet. And then the new adult is somebody who is trying to figure out who they are Mm -hmm. and they're not entirely certain they like what they're seeing and they need to have a piece of book that connects with them. Right. So for me, the the new adult that I'm reading, that I read for January, is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. And it is very much trying to figure out who you are, trying to figure out who your relationships are with people, etc. So that's probably about right. Okay. 
Well, let's talk about our favorite books for the month. Again, if you are looking for, at least for me, all the books I read, you can you know check out my Instagram. I post mm. every single one of them over there. Or our blog is anylaney.com. I have the same, pretty much the same reviews there as well. But we're going to talk about our absolute favorite books this month. I have five of them. So for these, we're talking about our 4.5s and 5-star reviews. Mm-hmm. And... For me, I don't really have too many there that I would say are 4.5, but I've got two four stars, and eh, I think that should fill things out. That works. Uh, so the first four star that I read this month was the Final Girls by Riley Sager. Mm-hmm. So this is the last of the Riley Sagers that I had yet to read. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of resisting reading it because I was like, oh, well, other books kind of went over the same. No, they did not go over the same I don't know where you got that notion. I I mean, from when I talked to you about this book, that's what you thought? Apparently. This is the story of a woman who is a survivor of a slaughter. A a maniac came and killed all of her quote-unquote friends. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, during college and now she's the only surviving victim she's got lots of trauma her mom was forcing pills down her throat in Mm -hmm. order to deal with the rage and the blackouts that she was facing because of ptsd Mm -hmm. and suddenly another final girl comes up to her and wants to reconnect after a third one has died and there's a lot of drama going on here but there's also something insidious And what I really liked about this book was the characters had tics, things that showed their psychological problems in very subtle ways. Yes. So our main character would be taking her pills and she'd always have to have grape soda Mm. to drink it down with because that was the first thing that her mother made her drink to take the pills. And so she's constantly flashing back to that trauma. I thought it was a very good book for that for for those reasons. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It has been so long since I've read this book. I was actually still working in my office mm-hmm. when I listened to this book. So it's been well over a year and a half. Yep. Um so I vaguely remember it, but you're happy you read this one then. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So I want to start by first talking about a book I literally just finished reading because I got it the moment it came out last week. And it is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kimmerer. Of course, it's the third in the Curse Breakers series. And it follows the conclusion of Ren and Harper and Gray and Leah Mara. Spoiler, Marshall, there's a new character named Leah Mara in the second book. It's basically the story of the two of the couples in their each their respective kingdoms. And they are preparing to go to war with each other. And... I know this is this is it's, <laughs> there's so it's, much spoilers especially since I'm currently reading the first one <laughs> right so besides that so obviously I can't tell you that much of it but I will tell you my feelings about it so for me the first 50 percent of this book was kind of a laggy thing it was very like you know what is happening here what is happening there let's talk about a little bit more here and talk about a little bit more there but there was nothing really like moving the plot along in my opinion there was a lot of expressed regret about things that had happened in the past so at 50 percent of the book and it started really to move forward a lot more and once it did i felt like it was a really good conclusion to the story However, and this is another slightly spoilery, but won't ruin things for you. I was not happy with what happened to two of the four characters at the end of this book. I felt like they got a bum rap. I felt like they were not given the chance. Even though I feel like it did conclude the way I thought it should conclude, I think there could have been more. And that kind of disappointed me. So that is why I had to knock it down one star, but the book itself is still really good. It's a really good conclusion, but the first one is still my favorite. So actually, well, that's kind of hard. The first two are actually really good, mostly because I really love the characters in the second book, but I really love the story of the first book. So Uh, my other four star is the one that I just finished last night called We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. This is the story of a death metal band that didn't realize it, but their manager sold their souls to a race of subterranean evil things. Awesome. Sounds like a rockin' time. 
and one person refused to sign the contract and ruined everything for the rest of them, and so she's stuck working in a motel Hmm. and hating her life and hating everything about it. Then she kind of wakes up and starts to realize that something is not right. And the rest of this story is everything you were afraid of from an end user license agreement coupled with bardic magic and death metal rock. It is a very slow wind up, but once it really gets going, it it wails. It's actually really good uh, for That's... someone for someone like me. Like I don't know if this is going to be a book that you would like. Probably not. But no. like there's a lot of references to death metal music. There's a lot of references to other forms of music. There's one part where the main character and a side character are sitting there talking about Dolly Parton. <laughs> and her inspiration for them because the the main character is the guitarist of the band and is a woman and her best line is a woman with a guitar never has to apologize for anything nice i it was a really solid book mm-hmm. and i loved the ending if you listen to this as an audiobook do stick around for all of the thank yous, because the ending of the thank yous has a stinger joke that just made me bust up laughing. That's awesome. So, uh, if you like death metal music, or if you like th- horrors, go for this one. I have actually two books that are coming out in March that I was able to read copies, advanced copies of. Both of them are part of a duology. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Spellmaker. It is the second book in the Spellbreaker duology. It is written by Charlie Ann Holmberg. I actually read both Spellbreaker and Spellmaker this month, and I gave them both four stars. So I'm going to talk about the set of books as a whole. So the this is a more of a fantasy magical realism. It takes place in the Victorian era, which made me very happy because not only is it all about magic and the Victorian era, but there's a lot of really nice descriptions of Victorian era clothing, which was fun for me since I'm learning about historical costuming. So when they talk about how she has to get dressed and her corsets and whatnot, and I'm just like... <laughs> I love this <laughs> so much. Um, and you guys, if you uh, are following me on YouTube or Instagram, you're going to see my historical costuming as that manifests itself. The main character, Elsie, uh, in this duology, she is a spell breaker. And that means that she can break spells, as the okay. name implies. Uh, but she is an illegal spell breaker. She's not registered for reasons. And so she is being sent on quests by people she doesn't know. Who exactly is sending her on quests? But her quests seem to help people. So she doesn't really question it. But she is told to go take a spell off a door to unlock it. And when she does, she finds a spell maker by the name of Bacchus, who is from Barbados, which is very interesting because they're in London, right? They're around the London area. Bacchus realizes what she is and keeps her secret, but... He kind of sort of blackmails her, but not really. So he tells her, I'll keep your secret if you help me break these really bad spells that are around the tenant's farm. So like their their crops are dying. She thinks they're by spells, so she breaks the spells so their crops will thrive. So not bad things, really. But then she starts to discover that the person who is sending her on these quests or people might not necessarily be as good as she thinks they are, especially when she finds out that a lot of the magicians are dying. They're being killed. And when they die, they leave behind an opus. And this opus is full of all their spells. So either A, if you are not a magically inclined person, like maybe your body can't handle the magic as much, you can use one spell page once. If you are a magically inclined person and can handle the magic, then you can use these spells to adhere them to your body in a certain way. So throughout the books, the two books, they're trying to figure out who is murdering these people for their opuses and why. So it's a very interesting book series. I really enjoyed it. I've always loved Charlie Holmberg's writings. I read the Paper Magician series. This, I believe, is 
better to me. I really like this one a lot more. I liked Paper Magicians, but I really like this series. Does this sound something? Some, it does sound very interesting to me. So my first five star of the year, really, was The Inheritance Games. This one is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It is the story of a girl who is coming up from nothing. Father didn't want to be a part of her life. Mother died. Things are terrible. And then all of a sudden she gets shipped away and is now the heiress of a huge fortune. Mm-hmm. And everybody around her is just a little bit weird. <laughs> but I like them. <laughs> and if you read this book, you probably will too. And that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about this, is that all of these people could have really turned out to be absolute jerks. But they weren't. Uh, somebody is. You're going to figure out somebody is. Otherwise, there's no plot. Right. But the ones that you think are going to be the biggest jerks aren't. They just have a few things they've got to work through. Yeah, they got some hidden complexities, for sure. And I think it was really good. One of the things that I also enjoyed about this was that a character who is already dead is revealing so much of their personality through the story. So the uh, rich gentleman who has suddenly roped her into all of this garbage has this massive mansion filled with puzzles and secret passages mm -hmm. and the more you look at all of these puzzles the more you're starting to see his mind and his story and i really liked that yeah that, that was the really good part of that uh -huh. he was omnipresent even though he was dead yeah. And you could tell the people that grew up with him in the house expected it. It's how he was his entire life. You know, mm -hmm. and they even when they thought things were straightforward, they would say, well, you know, Grandpa, Yeah, you know, he, he would make us run away. Or um, There is a second book coming out, I think, this year, which I am... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. For, yep, that's, that's happening. So I'm really glad you finally got a chance to read this book because it was one of my favorites last year. It, was, it ranked pretty high on my top 10 list i think it is very good yeah uh, next book is called you have a match by emma lord last year i read meet cute and i thought it was adorable and i loved it and i gave it five stars and this year of course she has you have a match and it is the story and i can't remember the names of them right now but the story of a girl who takes a dna test with her friends to find out if you know where they're from do they have any siblings and then she uh, gets reached out to by a girl claiming to be her sister and she's like I don't have a sister I'm the oldest child in my family and she's not a half sister she's a full sister meaning that both her mom and her dad are shared and she's like what is happening so they end up meeting at a camp that the sister who is older works at and then the main character comes to find out that her best friend is also working at this camp because they like changed names so there's a whole miscommunication. So the two sisters start getting to know each other but they're also trying to unwind the mystery of why her parents gave her up. Mm -hmm. She has been adopted by a very wealthy couple and she's kind of like this Instagram influencer, very successful in Instagram she's influencer. Insta Yes, she's insta-famous. So there's a really interesting dichotomy between the one who got adopted, who appears to be very successful, and the one who has the original parents, who's just kind of like... I'm here. Yeah. So it was an interesting book, and I thought it was really cute, but I only gave it four stars, just because I didn't like it as much as a meet cute but i thought it was still great and i really love this author i'm a lord mm -hmm. i want to read more about it is this this kind of book that you think that you'd be interested in at all i'm not entirely certain i i look at this whole concept of a a genetic match for dating and the only things that really seem interesting to me with this whole concept is where the system either breaks down or where it has some really bizarre results. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, people that normally would hate each other are, are matched with each other. What if you had a story where somebody got matched and it was themselves? What does that, what does that mean? We're going to talk about that um, in a little bit about, about this whole matching DNA thing. This made me think of it, but we'll talk about that. Okay. And 
You don't have any more books, correct? I, I have one more book. I have one more five Okay, star. very good. And that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. And this is the story of a world that got supervillains before it got superheroes. Mm-hmm. And those supervillains, though they went under the idea of the, the name of anarchists, their whole idea was that government was not actually helping us. Right. It was making it so that everybody was completely really reliant on people that didn't actually care about them. And the anarchists were like, tear it all down. And then a whole bunch of bad people came in and made things worse. So superheroes came in and kind of made things bad again in a weird way. Yeah, they had the way. intention at the beginning of making it good. Yeah, but now they're, they're so much in a system that it's not helping as yeah. much. And the story focuses around a girl named Nova, whose uncle was the leader of the anarchists. Mm-hmm. And her family died because... The, the renegades didn't come to save her, though. Mm-hmm. Which so, is funny because I think the point of view of Nova being and learning about the arch enemies and believing that the arch enemies were, or not the arch enemies, that the anarchists were good guys, really, mm-hmm. not just because of her family connection, but because of what she saw them do and mm-hmm. their intentions. But the rest of the world thinks the anarchists are villains. Are, are the worst kind of villains. Yeah. One of the things is, though, she is not part of the system at all. She was born after all of this chaos happened. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't have any records of her existence. She's been hiding with them this whole time. So the heroes don't know about her. And they come up. the anarchists come up with this great idea of giving her an identity and then having her try and get in as a spy in the Renegades. Mm-hmm. And once there, she starts to see that from the inside, it looks like a very different kind of place. Mm -hmm. And their intentions are very different from what she thought they were. And her own people aren't starting to look the same as they were. Yeah, it's it's kind of twisted. Now, I'm going to tell you... I only got through half of this book because I was trying to read it physically, and it's a kind of a large book. So my intention is to listen to Renegades, probably in the month of February, so that I can catch up. And then Marshall and I are going to read through the whole series. Yes. I very much enjoyed this story. I think some of the stuff that I liked the most, I liked a lot of the characters' powers and how the team that she ended up with... Most of their powers are really low key, mm-hmm. but they use it very well. Yeah, exactly. They're very creative with their powers. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I've seen some art as I think somebody is actually trying to turn this into an animated series. I don't, I don't doubt it. And the the character art goes in a very different direction than what my mind's eye sees. Mm-hmm. I was very interested in that. My last two that I'm talking about are actually part of the duology, which is why I saved them for last. And it is the Fable series. I gave Fable five stars and I gave Namesake four stars. Namesake is coming out in March. So I did read an advanced copy of this one as well. It is by Adrian Young. And it tells a story of Fable, who is a dredger. I think that's what they call it. She is the, the person. She goes down into the water. And she has the ability to find precious gemstones, other rocks, jewels, etc. down in the ocean floor. And then she can sell them or trade them or whatever to make her living. She was dropped off on an island when she was, I mean, she wasn't like young, young, but she was probably like 12, 13 when she was dropped off on this island by herself, by her father, who is a, he's the closest thing to like a legalized pirate that I think I can tell you about privateer privateer kind of yeah of people who like to move merchandise throughout their area or do illegal or legal things whatever so she was dropped off when her mother died to this island so she is very angry at her father but there's also some like riffraff on the island that want to kill her because she's a girl and she's doing well so they chase her off the island and she escapes on a boat uh, with this whole crew of like also kind of misfitty type people. And it starts the story of her trying to get back to figuring out why her father left her, how her mother died. And then she meets a bunch of other people that are entwined in her story. And she has to do a lot of like dredging for different reasons and different people. It is a very complex story, but not unenjoyable. I felt like when I was reading it, like the first book, Fable, 
I felt like it was something I had read before, but not in a boring way. I was just comfortable and like it was it was in a world that I was already familiar with and I didn't did not hate that at all. But it was a new story. I don't know how to explain it much more than that. It was like Mm -hmm. a comfortable, comfortable book. Uh, The second book is I can't even talk to you about what it's really about because it will spoil things that happen in the first book since you haven't read either. And the second book does wind up where she finds this one major stone uh, that people are looking for. And she has to save people she loves, decide who she loves, decide if the people that she loves are actually good people or bad people. And on generalized terms, that's all I can really say about that book. But I did give it four stars. I didn't think it was as good as the first one, but I really loved it. I really did love it. So I did want to talk about a couple things that are book to movie or series adaptations that are coming to Netflix, if I am remembering correctly. This month, I believe it's Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I have not read this book, but it was on my list to kind of read, but then I heard some bad reviews about it. So I decided I'm just going to wait until it comes out on Netflix and watch it. Mm -hmm. Then there is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo, which is, uh, Marshall has read the Six of Crows series series by Lee Bardugo and I am excited to read this. I do have the Shadow and Bone book on my Kindle. I just haven't read it yet. So I might do that by the time it comes out. I do not know. And the last one that just got announced like two days ago is The One by John Mars is coming to Netflix. I have read this book. I have told Marshall he needs to read this book, but now he might just wait for that. Netflix Maybe, yeah. movie. It is, a, we were talking about You Have a Match. It's kind of the same thing, but it's not. So it's a, basically a world where if you register for the, for the system, based on your DNA profile, there is one match for you based on DNA. And it, it, it tells the story of, I cannot even remember how many couples who get together through this system and it is really not what you think what happens to each couple each story is different they're all kind of intertwined though and it is it's just such a good book i really really enjoyed the way the story is woven together and i really hope that when they make this on netflix that they keep to that spirit and i think they will because it looks like john mars is helping them with this. I don't know if he wrote the screenplay or what, but whatever. So (laughs) those are three that are coming. So I'm kind of excited for that. Also, for those of you who are interested, Leanne Moriarty is coming out with a new book in uh, September of 2021 called Apples Never Fall. Leanne Moriarty did Big Little Lies and Nine Perfect Strangers. I actually really like Leanne Moriarty's writing as well. And I don't think Marshall's read anything by her, so it might be something interesting to let him read as well. But she just did a cover reveal for this yesterday, I think, Hmm. was when she revealed it. So pretty pretty exciting news there as well. Thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. Find Laney on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. For updates, keep an eye on Elated Geek on Instagram or Elated Geek tweets on Twitter. Go to our website at elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. You can use the same email to send us your Mario Maker 2 levels and have me show them on our YouTube channel. Till next time. Geek out.